After a brief soak in the not-so-hot hot springs and a bit of sunbathing down by the river, we departed the bygone Nazi stronghold with our dirty GoPro lens and did our best to enjoy the final bit of dirt before jumping back on Argentina's Ruta 40. Uh, that was 120 kilometers worth of fun right there. I haven't had that much fun since yesterday. Did, did you feel us almost slam dance in the sand back there? <laughs> yeah, I felt that. I puckered just a little. There was a little bit of puckering going on there. That was, uh, that definitely got my attention. Back in Sosneado, we fueled up, rinsed off, and admired a few motos before heading north en route to the wine capital of Argentina, Mendoza. That's right, nothing but the best, baby. After a rough night in Hotel Central, we set off for Avenida San Martin in the heart of downtown Mendoza, ground zero for the city's blue dollar black market. Come on. I they don't not want to be on camera. No. All right, so we're here on San Martin. Huh? Cambio? No, no, get out here. And walking up and down the street, you can't help but people just bombarding you, asking you if you want to change money. Cambio, cambio, cambio. The guy just asked me right there. Well, Rose was trying to film people asking if I wanted to exchange money, but a lot of them aren't really all that fond of being on video, which is understandable because despite the fact that it's you know, something that happens out in the open, it's still kind of an underground economy here in Argentina, which is very strange. Your money is literally worth twice as much if you exchange it on the street, they call it the blue dollar, than the official exchange rate. Like if you use your credit card or your debit card. Interesting part of life here in Argentina. After a few laps on San Martin, we managed to not only find the best exchange rate for our Chilean pesos, but someone who wasn't afraid to appear on camera. Look at this guy. First California license plate. I've seen in a long, long time.
Flush with cash, we splurged on a map. A proper hotel for the night. A can of chain lube. <laughs> and a proper dinner with Lauren and Larissa of Two Up and Dirty Adventures. Before plotting our next move. Somewhere high in the Andes. Couple switchbacks. Yeah, a couple. <laughs> I love it here. Yeah, it's nice and cool up here at altitude. Yeah. Whew. All right, up the mountain we go. Departing the sweltering lowlands of Mendoza, we elected to take the scenic route to Uspallata, up Provincial Road 52, through Reserva Natural via Vicencio to Cruz de Paramillo, a wooden cross erected by the Jesuits in the 17th century. Continuing briefly on the rough track known as Camino de la Cruz, we stopped to admire the view of Aconcagua in the distance. You want to hop on? <laughs> Do you want to hop on? Before making the descent into the Badlands, punctuated by old roads, remnants and ruins of the oldest mines in all of Argentina, some of which have been dated to pre-Columbian times. Well, we always say location, location, location. We do. Looks like we got ourselves another fixer. Oh, watch that last step. <laughs> Still has a bit of a roof line. <laughs> oh, pretty cool, actually. She's a fixer for sure, but. She's got a great view. Continuing toward Uspallata, we stopped occasionally to admire more modern ruins. Before fueling up in town and hitting the tarmac on Argentina's Ruta 7 toward Punta del Inca, Mount Aconcagua, and our goal for the day, Cristo Redentor de los Andes on the Argentinian-Chilean border. Christ the Redeemer of the Andes sits at 12,500 feet, 3,800 meters on the La Cumbre Pass, a border crossing that served as a major artery between the Pacific seaports of Santiago de Chile and Buenos Aires on the Atlantic coast of the continent. Before construction of the long abandoned Transandine Railroad Tunnel in 1910, which was likewise supplanted in 1980 by the Christ the Redeemer Tunnel at the heavily trafficked Los Liberadores border crossing on the Pan American Highway.
The canyon above Rio Mendoza is littered with collapsed tunnels, remnants of the old railroad line ravaged by time and consumed by avalanches, and reminders of untold tragedies and lives lost. The original La Cumbre Pass, simply designated RNA-006, departs the highway here, in the village of Las Cuevas. You almost died. I blame it on the hypoxia. Once one of the most critical land borders in all of South America, it is no more than a novelty now for those who wish to visit the statue, live in the past, or perhaps sneak into or out of the country at this long abandoned border crossing, high in the Andes. Mm -hmm. 